So after a really long, nearly six hour drive to Southampton, we've reached our hotel, which is called the Star Hotel. And if you take a look at it, it's the usual hotel my wife books. One what looks like it was built in the 1800s and was last done up in the 1960s. So I guess there'll be no air conditioning in the room. The room will be like an oven. And it's just, it's cost six quid to park. <laughs> just. But it is right in the middle of Southampton and it's full because of cruise ships. Anyway, let's get the bags and get in, check in and check out what the room's like. Because I guess it's going to be an oven. The Star Hotel is situated on the east side of the High Street between East Street and Holy Rood Place. It dates back to at least the early 17th century when it appears in the Court Leet Records. It was, however, probably an inn long before this. This current building dates from the 18th century. The lower three storeys were built before 1800 and the upper storey was added and the render or stucco in 1830 or 1840. From the late 18th century it was a famous coaching inn and still retains the archway through which the coaches pass to the courtyard and the stables. It is a grade 2 listed building. An historic plate is fixed on the front of the wall near the archway. It reads, Coaches to London, Sundays accepted. Alresford Alton performs 10 hours. This probably refers to the Collier's Long Coach, which left at 5am every day for the Bell Savage Inn, Lungate Hill, London. The hotel probably had its most famous guest in 1883. The Queen Victoria, when she was still a princess at the age of 14, opened the Royal Pier while staying in this hotel with her mother, the Duchess of Kent. In the Second World War, the star was occupied by the American Navy. The building was then completely restored in 1965 when the High Street facade was returned to its Georgian appearance. Now by the look of this radiator and this single pipe central heating system this looks like it probably still is the heating system they put in in 1965. Now we're in room 44 so let's check this out and see if this is still from 1965. Well at least the door locks modern. Uh, no, more like 1980 instead of 1965. Look at that lovely wallpaper. And that um, nice little unit there. At least we've got some brewing tackle. And a, a mirror. Hello. So let's check out the ensuite. So uh, oh, not too bad. Got a nice shower. Obviously the usual wash basin and toilet. We have a window. But it's like an oven in here. <laughs> let's check out the view from the window let's pull these 1980 neck curtains back oh we get a lovely view of our car in the car park and the skyline of Southampton look at these windows they're still single paned in steel frames at least we do have a flat screen TV do you think someone's having a laugh with this can you read that mind ye head really it's about 25 foot up. <laughs> Some people are very, very funny, aren't they? So let's check out the high street and see if we can find anywhere to eat because we are both absolutely starving. Look at this. Absolutely amazing. You don't get to see this every day, do you? It's a Burger King. They've got Burger King. I can't believe it. We don't have Burger King anymore where we are. We've got to go and have a Burger King. Come on. Gutted. Still not had a Burger King. It's closed. Quarter to ten. It's closed. No wonder they bloody vanish. Mackie D's have taken over. They're open 24 hours. Now we can't have Burger King, but we have come across this place. Taco Bell. 
which we have never been to or never eaten in before. Now I do believe there is one in Manchester, but I've never seen it. So let's get in and have a look and see what the food is. Sounds very Mexican. And I do believe there are 137 restaurants in the UK. Come on then, let's see what there is. So after looking at the restricted menu, we've decided to go for this meal for two but still no clue what it's going to be. So we ended up with two burrito supremes, which basically were filled with beef. We had two crunchy beef tacos. We had seasoned fries. We had cinnamon twists. And we had a nacho cheese dip. I'm sorry, Taco Bell lovers. That's my first time and my last time in Taco Bell. Not my kind of food. <laughs> But it did stop me going hungry. So on our walk back to the hotel, let's check out this little uh, castle gate by the looks of it. So this structure is the Bar Gate, which is a Grade 1 listed medieval gatehouse. It was constructed in Norman times as part of the Southampton town walls. It was the main gateway into the city. The building is a scheduled monument which has served as a temporary exhibition and event space for Southampton's Solent University since 2012. The monument served as a police headquarters for the city during the Second World War. In November 2020, the lion sculptures were removed to allow them to be repaired. As part of this, the previous internal structure was removed and replaced with stainless steel version. They were subsequently returned to the public display in March 2021, having repainted in what is believed to be their original colours. Now we're in the dining room and it looks like it was done up in 1965, so hopefully this full English breakfast wasn't made in 1965 and is enjoyable. So that's our very hot and sticky night over and done with at the Star Hotel. I, mean, I think I got about two minutes sleep. It was that hot, like I said it would be. Anyway, why are we in Southampton? Well this morning we've got business meetings going ahead. So I'm meeting a good friend of mine, ex-business uh, partner, also ex-colleague at Tameside College and at the council, Andy Music. So we're going to his training centre in Southampton first for a, a meeting. And then we're going over to the Isle of Wight. And we're actually, well, I'll tell you where we're staying a little bit later on. So first of all, we're going to get over to Andy's centre, which is about a 10 minute drive from here. And uh, we're on to the ferry then. So, catch you in a minute. So this is where Andy's training centre is. So if you fancy doing plumbing or gas courses in Southampton, then check out Core Vocational Training. Now it's time to board the Red Funnel Ferry and get across to the Isle of Wight. Red Funnel has been connecting passengers between the Isle of Wight and Southampton for 163 years. The company was formed in 1861, which was the year Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Albert, died. Red Funnel is the original Isle of Wight ferry operator. The duration of the car ferry is one hour and it takes you to East Cowes. Now we just arrived at the place where we're staying for the next couple of days. It's just started raining. Still really warm, but it's raining. So Andy and his wife Kath have kindly booked us in for three days at Thornus Bay Holiday Park. So this is going to be where we're staying for the next few days. How amazing is that? So Andy has brought his little mobile home to this fantastic campsite for us to enjoy for the next two days. So, cheers for that Andy. Come on, I'll show you around because we've never stayed in a mobile home before. Loads of caravans, but never an actual house that can move. 
So uh, we're really looking forward to this. So let's have a look inside. So on the pitch where we're staying, we have our own water supply and we are connected to the electric. And Andy's already set it all up for us. Now, first of all, Andy has put us this little awning up on the side. So we've got an outside inside bit to uh, give us a little bit more room. So come on. So let's get the zip unzipped and get us into this awning. As you can see, we've got a couple of chairs and a couple of tables and a ground sheet to enjoy the outside in. <laughs> so let's get into the van itself. As we walk in, we've got a little kitchen and a little seating area. That's the two driver's chairs. Turn round, there's also a bed up there. So we've got all the mod cons, we've got a sink, we've got a full cooker and oven, fridge freezer, microwave, TV, everything you need. And we've got this double bedroom, air conditioning, which we didn't have in the hotel room, but we have in the van, and loads of cupboard space. We've even got a little heater if we get cold. We've got Wi-Fi, which is fantastic. Then we've got a shower in the bathroom, wash basin and a cassette toilet which uh, I don't think I'm looking forward to use but anyway <laughs> there is a shower block and toilet on site so that's our little mobile home. So the facilities on the site are we've got this boathouse bar and restaurant where you can get your breakfast lunch and dinner as well as the restaurant and bar there is also this arcade for the young kids there is a heated indoor swimming pool with water slides there is a kids play area and also multi-sports courts as well as a little stage there is a laundrette there is also a fantastically stocked little shop and they have a chippy and if you like the beach just five minutes walk down a coastal path you'll find this fantastic beach at Thornus Bay. Now I've decided to do what any good friend would do I'm not going to use Andy's bathroom even though it is such a nice bathroom I wouldn't want to uh, wish that on anybody so I've got my bag full of my clean clothes and my towel and I'm going to go over to the shower block which is just there which is literally around the grass from the little camper van so let's see what ablutions we've got in the shower block I believe these showers, baths, toilets so let's check it out find out what there is so let's get inside and see what there is. Now there is a code thing on the door, but you don't use it. You can just go in through this bit of an airlock and then into this brightly colored <laughs> area. So we've got urinals. We've got rows of wash basins. We've got WCs. There's quite a few showers, again brightly coloured. We've got in here, we've got a disabled bathroom with a bath and a shower. This is what I'm going to be trying out. And let's see how good these showers are and how long these non-concussive showers work. <laughs> yeah. Not very long by the looks of it. Let's try that again. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll have a bath. <laughs> anyway, what else have we got? Mirror. Oh yeah, there's somewhere to dry my hair. So, it's also got underfloor heating underneath here. You can feel the heat. So that's the 
showering facilities here and it won't be a Tomcat video without checking the gear out what actually heats the water for this shower block not look too bad so looks like we've got a storage tank which is over a thousand litres a couple of valence system boilers with an automatic fill system there's a low loss header separating the pumps and then we've got the thermostatic mixers for the showers a huge cylinder and the underfloor heating manifolds now these boilers run off LPG and I'm going to be doing a series on LPG coming soon so look out for them good morning may I say thank you again to Andy and Kath for lending us the motorhome yesterday because we had an amazing night's sleep with that air conditioning blasting absolutely fantastic anyway another meeting this afternoon so do what all Brits do when we're on holiday found the restaurant and we're going to get a brekkie let's check it out and see how good it is so a very nice restaurant and bar which at the moment but we are early in the morning isn't too busy and yes when I'm on holiday I like to have a full English every morning now here's something I've never done in my life before empty a toilet cartridge on a camper van so at least Andy's left us some gloves He's give me some instructions which is basically put this yellow tab down pull. God, <laughs> don't know how much your wee weighs so now we've got to go and take this to an Elson and uh, empty it so here we are at an Elson I guess we take this cap off the end I think do we? Spin out. Take it out. As simple as that. So that's how you empty a toilet cartridge <laughs> in a uh, mobile home. And that's the end of our little trip to the Isle of Wight. So hopefully you've liked the video and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Now, before we get to the main ferry port, we actually need to use this floating bridge. And this is between East Cows and Cows. It was established in 1859 and is one of the few remaining floating bridges that hasn't been replaced by a physical bridge. Prior to the ownership by the local authority, the service was run by the Floating Bridge Company and the Steam Packet Company, Red Funnel, which we used to get over it. Before any kind of floating bridge existed, a rowing boat ferry operated between Cows and East Cows, transporting pedestrians only. From 1842, cars and animals could be transported across using a pontoon, which was winched across under a horsepower. From the 24th of November 1859, the first steamboat was used. And then in 1868, the ferry was bought by the Steam Packet Company, or Red Funnel as it's known today.